Satori D, <laughs> welcome to Nodes in the Net. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, you know, the net of Indra is like this uh, metaphor that I've always latched onto. So when I first heard about uh, Nodes in the Net, that's like instantly what it invoked in my mind. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Like it, you know, it resonated with me. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I'm glad that's uh, that's what you pulled from it because it is it what JT and I when we were starting the podcast that was exactly what we intended to evoke. So I'm excited oh, about sweet. that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of like a, a a net as in internet that we we're, we're all uh, communicating through, and also mm-hmm. uh, just like you said, nodes and interest net. That's like the thing that I'm probably most interested in and is like this and I guess it goes to the our Discord server, which is like um kind of weird. <laughs> but uh it's it's about like like one thing I like is like myths are strange attractors. And it's like these mm. these ideas and like these pools of information. We're like in orbit of them. Cause like I like anytime I like resonate with something and I dig a little deeper, then like I see like these like fractal patterns like reflect, and I'm like, oh okay, this is like why I was attracted to it. <laughs> like, yeah. Before I even know anything about it, like, and then like later I'm like, oh now it makes sense why. Like I was like, oh what's this? <laughs> right, 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 right. I I've noticed that too, and like a, a thing that I'm constantly saying is that podcasts seem like synchronicity factories. So like. If you're listening to, you know, the Duncan Trestle Family Hour regularly, somehow you get caught in the same like thought orbit or or maybe thought stream that's available mm-hmm. to all of us in the collective consciousness. And like the day before an episode comes out, you're thinking about like magic, and then the next day it's Damien Eccles on <laughs> on air, you know, <laughs> or or yeah, anything yeah. like that. Can you define strange attractor for me, though? I think it's got like a, that's a is it a quantum physics term? Yeah, I, I think that's um, there's this blog I was reading, and it's it's called Mr. Strange Attractors. An analogy can be drawn between the relationship of the two microbiomes and mythology in a matter of scale, emanating the Gnostic motto as above, so below. Observations can be drawn in the world of biogeography might apply to the behavior of narrative as a part of an ecosystem. As the internet further acts as a representation of social networks, analysis can be assisted through elaborate real-time modeling and, and analysis of a global narrative machine. Myths are the primary selectors of social motility, even if not a motive. It is not as if we read and enact our lives like a play. We are tugged and pulled by them as they are simultaneously created by us and creating us, existing at all the junctures in which our world overlaps with one another. Myths arise as relationships, points of intersections, they present within us a context, and it it is in this context in which they must be understood. These relationships are complex and involve an open ambiguity about their power dynamics. The relationship between the ritual object and the work of art, an individual audience member, and the relationship between audience members all occur within the framework provided by our myths themselves, especially the most inaudible but ever-present whispers of the past. Finally, myths are strange attractors, the set of values towards which a system tends to evolve. A body plan defines a space of possibilities. The space of all possible vertebrate designs, for example. The formal study of these possible spaces is more advanced in physics and chemistry, where they are referred to as phase spaces. Their structure is given by topological invariants called attractors, as well as by the dimensions of the space, dimensions that represent the degrees of freedom or relative ways of changing of concrete physical or chemical dynamical systems. In the biological and social science sciences, on the other hand, we do not yet have the appropriate formal tools to investigate the structure of much more complex possible spaces. This means that the tools of literacy, psychology, and social analysis may be all set loose on our myths, with the recognition that this is not considerably more than a purely academic issue. Beyond that, astutely neurological and mathemat- mathematical linguistic models will continue to have their place. 
using multidisciplinary approaches, it is an open discussion that could benefit as much as from exploration of cognitive psychology as it can be from analysis of literature symbols or the direct experience of shamanic rituals. This is not a science, but does not make our aims any, any less legitimate? And science can even provide us with the most useful metaphors. And what we learn in this domain may never be certain, but nonetheless vital to do so. Not only in the hopes of understanding ourselves, but more troubling because these semantic and sentiment systems are already at work in our social technological ecosystems, our media, our social systems, our markets, as well as part of the ever evolving web of language darting across the globe and bouncing off satellites. We hope this repraisal of myth leads us to new ideas and questions which none of us would formulate on our own. It is a group endeavor and benefits the most from interactions of minds in the commons. What it becomes is in all our hands.